All right, we're going to start solving algebraic equations. And before we start, I want to talk about expressions versus equations again today. So we've been working with expressions. 3x minus 6 here in red is an example of an algebraic expression. And so far, what we've done in class, we've, we've evaluated those. Uh, we've simplified them using combined like terms. We simplified if they have parentheses. We removed the parentheses using the distributor property. So we've done a lot of work with expressions. Uh, there's no equal sign. Um, we cannot solve them. We can only evaluate them if we have a, a value for the variable. Equations look like this. 3x minus 6 equals 24. The first thing you should know is it has an equal sign. We do not evaluate equations. We solve equations. So we want to find the value of x. What's the one value of x that makes this equation a true statement where 3x minus 6 does actually equal 24? You can't just substitute any value in for x. You've got to find the specific value for x for an equation. Now, students often get these confused because they look very similar, right? They both have operation signs, right? You have addition signs, subtraction, you got multiplication and division. They both have variables in them, and they both have numbers, right? But they're very different. So algebraic expression versus algebraic equation, I want you to train your eye for those and recognize expressions you can simplify only, equations you can solve. All right, so here's our first equation. We have negative 3 plus m equals 15. My first question for you is, you got to think about how is the variable m and the negative 3 on the left side, how are they tied together? What's the operation between them? I hope you came up with the operations addition. And then how do we undo addition? Or what's the inverse operation of addition? I'm hoping you came up with subtraction. So if you want to move something from the left side here, we can either move the variable m or the number negative 3 by simply subtracting that same value from both sides of the equation. So I could subtract m from both sides, but why do I want to do that? Because I want to have m isolated on the left side here. So we want to move this uh, negative 3. We would actually subtract negative 3 from both sides. But we know subtracting negative 3 is the same as adding positive 3. So you'll hear me say a lot of times, we just want to add the opposite of whatever we want to move. So if we want to move the negative 3, we can add positive 3 to both sides of the equation. So let's just take a moment, look at adding the opposite. So if I go 5 plus negative 5, I get 0. If I go negative 8 plus 8, I get 0. We could be here all day long. Anytime you add opposite integers, the positive and the negative number, you will always get 0. So that's the whole idea here. If you want to move something, I, I don't want negative 3. I would like to add the opposite so I can get that to be 0 on the left side. I'm going to have a number on the right, but it becomes 0 on the left. So whatever you want to move, you simply add the opposite. If I want to move the 1m, what's the opposite of 1m? Negative 1m. So I would add negative 1m to both sides if that's what I wanted to move. If you wanted to move the 15 for some reason, well, how would you move positive 15? Negative 15, right? So 15 plus negative 15 gets you 0. If you did that, then you would have 0 on the right side and you had the numbers on the left side. So here's our example. We subtracted negative 3 from both sides, which we changed to add the opposite. So we went plus positive 3, add 3 to both sides. So look what happens. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. I don't need to write 0 on the left side, just, but it goes to 0. It goes away. 1m plus, and there's no m here, 0 is 1m. 15 plus the 3, 18. So there is our answer. How do we check to make sure we got this right? To check, we simply take our answer and we substitute it back into the original equation for the variable m. So in this case, we'd have negative 3 plus, boop, substitute 18 for m equals 15. And then negative 3 plus 18 is 15. So we get 15 equals 15. Check. Let's look at our next equation. We have negative 4w 
equals negative 32. So my first question for you is, what operation sign is between the negative 4 and the W? What's the operation that's going on between the, the two, the number and the variable? I'm hoping you came up with multiplication, right? This is really like saying negative 4 times the variable W, right? And we learned that when we were evaluating expressions. So how do we undo multiplication? If I want to remove that negative 4, I can't just subtract or, or add the opposite this time because they're tied together by multiplication. So we have to undo that multiplication. How do we undo multiplication? I hope you came up with division, right? So if we divide by divide by negative 4, well, then this would become a 1 because negative 4 over negative 4 is 1. Anytime you divide by the same number, you always get 1. This is a big idea, right? Whatever the coefficient is of your variable, if you divide by that value every time, it will give you 1, which is what we want to have when we're solving for 1 x or 1 w or 1 m okay so here's the full example we're going to divide both sides by negative four again what you do to one side of the equation you must do the other as you're just learning this it is very good idea to put the bridge right down the middle so you don't lose your equal sign a lot of students lose the equal sign when they're first doing this so we divide by negative four I usually like to put a little division sign like that here with negative 4 as well, so you know you're not subtracting it. Um, so then this becomes a 1, so that's why we're left with 1w. Negative divided by negative is a positive. And then negative 32 divided by negative 4 is positive 8. All right? So again, how are we going to check to make sure we got this right? Yes, we're going to use substitution, so let's do it negative 4 parentheses boop 8 right 8 replaces the w equals negative 32 so negative 4 times 8 negative 32 equals negative 32 is that a true story yes it is so then check we got it right if you would have got positive 32 equals negative 32 then you go eh, you made a mistake somewhere or if you got 16 equals negative 32 that's not true and then you would know you made a mistake and you need to go back and check your math. All right, I wanted to point out, you, you just divide by the coefficient of the variable, both sides. But you can also think of it as multiply by the reciprocal of the, of the coefficient. So in this case, the coefficient is negative, one, is negative 4 over 1. So if you're going to multiply, you could actually multiply both sides by negative 1 fourth. It would be the same as dividing by negative 4. And that's going to come into play, you'll see in a later example, when we're looking at uh, fractions, for the, as a fraction for the coefficient. It's easier to think of it as uh, multiplied by the reciprocal, both sides. All right, so again, the bridge, just want to make that a, a big thing here, that you may want to use this so that you don't lose each side. Okay, because you, what you do to one side, you must do the other only once per side. Otherwise, you'll make a mistake when you're solving these equations. I'm going to have you do a couple here. And I put these up to make them look very similar, right? We have x plus 3 equals 15, and we have 3x equals 15. I want you to solve both of these equations separately, and I want you to notice the difference in your process for how you go to solve these, okay? Give me the answer in Edpuzzle. Tell me the left side, x equals this, the right equation, x equals this. Go ahead and solve these. You need to take out a piece of paper, write them down, go for it. All right. So the equation on the left side, x plus 3 equals 15, you got to ask yourself, how is, how is x and the number 3 tied together? That's right. They are tied together by addition. So how do we undo addition? Subtraction. So the first step here should have been you're going to subtract 3 from both sides. Okay, so then we get x equals 12, right? 3 minus 3 is 0. 15 minus 3 is 12. Look at the equation on the right side. 3x equals 15. How are those tied together? The number and the variable are tied together by multiplication. 
How do we undo multiplication? Division. So we're going to divide by 3, divide by 3. 3 over 3 becomes a 1. So that's 1x equals 15 divided by 3 is 5. So two equations I wrote on purpose to make them pretty similar looking, but you can see completely different process. It's all about what's the relationship between the variable and the number here. So these terms are separated by addition sign. This time the, the 3 and the x is one term, and we know they're tied together by multiplication. So we couldn't just subtract 3 on the right one, the right equation. If we just subtract 3, that's not going to work, right? They're not like terms. So you can't undo, you can't do that without dividing by three. It's the only way you're going to be able to undo uh, this process here. All right, how do you check them? Substitute back in. Let's just check real quick. 12 plus three, is that 15? Yep, check. Okay, ready? Three times five, 15. That equals 15. Check. All right, this time I'm giving you two equations. One is x minus seven equals 21. The other one is negative 7x equals 21. Please solve both of these equations. In that puzzle, tell me the left equation equal x equals this, the right equation x equals this. All right, how is x and the number tied together? They're tied together by subtraction. How do you undo subtraction? Addition. So x minus 7, we're going to simply go add 7 to both sides, right? And so then we get x equals 28. On the right side, how is negative 7 and x tied together? They're tied together by multiplication. So we're going to undo that with division. We're going to divide by the same value, negative 7. But what I do to one side, I must also do to the other side. So we're going to divide that by negative 7. So negative 7 over negative 7 is a 1. So this becomes 1x equals 21 divided by negative 7. Well, that's going to be negative 3. Let's check our answers. On the left one, 28 minus 7, does that equal 21? Yes, it does. Check. And then negative 7 times negative 3, isn't that positive 21? So we get 21 equals 21. Check. All right, we're going to deal with fractions in our equations now. And I'm just going to remind you, when you multiply by a fraction, I'm sorry, when you divide by a fraction, what did we learn back in the day? We don't divide fractions. We do what? We multiply by the reciprocal, right? So instead of dividing by one-fourth on the right equation, you're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal one-fourth, which is 4 over 1, which is also known as 4. Give it a try. All right, the equation on the left, the one-fourth and the x are tied together by addition, so we're just going to subtract one-fourth from both sides. So we're going to get x equals 4 and 3 fourths. You remember how to do this? You can borrow a 1 from the 5, so make this 4 and 4 fourths, right? And 4 fourths minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. That's how we got that answer there. On the equation on the right, we're going to divide both sides by 1 fourth, but we know we don't divide fractions. We multiply by the reciprocal. So we're actually, on this one, is we're going to multiply this side by 4 and this side by 4. Think of it as 4 over 1, right? 4 times 1 is 4, 1 times 4 is 4, so this becomes 4 over 4x equals 20, and 4 over 4 is a 1, so x equals 20. Okay, if we're going to check it, 4 and 3 fourths plus 1 fourth equals 5, check. 1 fourth times 20, well that's 20 fourths, and 20 fourths becomes 5, check. All right, last two for our guided practice. So. We have two equations again. We have x minus 2 thirds equals 9, and we have 2 thirds x equals 9. All right, I'd like you to solve each one of these. Again, in that puzzle, tell me the left equation equals what, and the right equation equals what. All right, for our left equation, 
we have subtraction. These are tied by subtraction, so we're going to undo it with addition. So we are going to say plus two-thirds plus two-thirds. So we're going to get x equals nine and two-thirds on the left. On the right equation, ooh, we have two-thirds x. So we divide both sides by two-thirds, but again, we don't divide with fractions. We multiply by the reciprocal. So we are going to multiply by 3 over 2. 3 over 2, both sides. When you do the one side, you must do the other. Okay, so 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. So you have 6 over 6x six equals 9 times 3 is 27. 1 times 2 is 2. So we're going to get 1x equals 27 halves, or you can say that's 13 and 1 half. You could also say 13.5. Those are all good. So 27 halves or 13 and a half or 13.5 were all correct answers. Okay. If I like, I like the 27 halves, though, for checking. Let's do the check here and show you how it works. So to check it, I'm going to go two-thirds multiplied by 27 over 2, right? And so I get 2 times 27. Well, that's 54. And then 3 times 2, well, that's 6. Oh, 54 over 6, well, that's 9, right? 54 divided by 6 is 9. Check. It works. And then this one, 9 and 2 thirds minus 2 thirds equals 9. Check. All right, how are you doing with today's lesson? We're going to spend a lot of time solving algebraic equations, but the sooner you can get the foundational skills down here for how you manipulate the equations, the more success you're going to have at a much faster rate. So let me know, what is your point of confusion? Are you okay when you have addition or subtraction between the number and the variable? Um, or are you okay when you have a number and the variable tied together by multiplication? Um, what are your points of confusion that I can address for you in class?